Hey guys, my name's Blake, and tonight we're going to talk about some problems with the F-250 here, and then uh, the wreck I got into with it. So, yeah, it's been a fun, fun few days around our house. Uh, long story short, the transmission uh, front seal and the transfer case front seal are both leaking. Neither one of those things is a huge deal, neither one of those things is the end of the world. because repairing them is pretty involved. The transfer case is easy, but to do the transmission seal, you have to remove either the engine or transmission, which would mean removing the transfer case as well, just so you can get in there. So I wasn't terribly worried about that until I began to notice a coolant leak being blown out the radiator uh, overflow here. Now the reason, the reason that is such a big issue is because the only way for that much pressure to get into your cooling system is from the combustion chamber, which means either a blown head gasket or a cracked head or something else along those lines. Something pretty serious that is probably going to require removing the engine. So if you saw the video the other night, if you didn't, I'll link to it right up here. But I was driving this pickup home from Brandon's house towing his flatbed gooseneck trailer. When I got out here on the road right in front of the house, I was coming down the hill and it had been snowing and it was pretty icy and the truck began to jackknife. So I did what any reasonable person would do. I reached down for the trailer brake controller to apply the trailer brakes and straighten everything back out. If you apply just your trailer brakes and not your pickup brakes, that is basically anchoring the back of the trailer and everything will pull straight. Works great when your trailer brakes work. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, I grabbed my brake controller and hit the lever for trailer brakes, and there were not. I would later find out from Brandon he knew there were no trailer brakes, and just failed to mention that little tidbit, which would have been very nice to know before taking off with it. But regardless, the truck jackknifed with the trailer, and what saved it is the fact that I did put this flatbed on, because if you look right here, the damage in the powder coat, that is where the upper horizontal part of the gooseneck hit the bed and stopped it from crushing the rear of the cab. But it didn't prevent all the damage because the rub rail and the front corner of the deck of the trailer caved in the door here and then punched that hole in it. So, lucky me, now I have a blown head gasket, probably, and need a new door. It just keeps getting better, kids. So now with my smashed door, it's time to find out if I have a blown head gasket. Uh, what we're gonna do is I picked up this tool from an auto parts store in town. It's one of the loaner tool deals where you pay for it, you use it, you take it back, you get your money back. But we're gonna put a special die in here and I've got that over on the table behind me. And then we're gonna start the truck, insert this tester into the radiator cap and we're going to pull some air out of the radiator into this tester. And this special fluid, uh, it, it is blue when it's in new condition. And if it turns blue, green, or yellow, you are getting exhaust gas in your cooling system, which means you have a blown head gasket or a cracked head. So now in order to perform this test, the truck does need to be warmed up. I've got this one warm. It's actually been sitting out here and idling with all the doors and everything open for quite some time before I came out to film this video. So let's fill our little container here with fluid up to the line. And then I will insert it in the radiator and we'll go from there. All right, we are filled up to the line here. Now the directions say to pull coolant out of your radiator until the coolant level is two to three inches below the filler neck. I did not have to do that because mine has already been leaking and the coolant was already two to three inches below the neck. So you can see we're getting some air bubbles in there, but now let's, let's pull some air through and see what we get.
All right, so I've been at this for several minutes now, and as you can see, our fluid is just as nice and blue and clear as when I poured it in there. So, at least according to this tester, I don't have a blown head gasket. That's really good news. But it leaves me wondering why, if you can see down in there, why is this truck puking antifreeze out the coolant uh, reservoir? If it's not a blown head gasket, what is it? It's obviously something not working out. So we're going to have to figure that out. That'll be in another video coming up. Uh, the transfer case repair will be in another video coming up soon as well. So subscribe if you guys want to see that stuff. Thanks for watching and more later.